So I have with me Akshat and Harsh and every week there is a new development in the generative AI space in the large language models uh, development. Tell me what happened last week? So last week OpenAI released GPT 3.5 fine tuning. Okay. So OpenAI has the most advanced large language models in the world today uh, but they've been close to us. Okay. So we could do prompting, we could give them instructions and ask the model to do something but we couldn't really provide it our own data. Right. So finally, as of last week, we can fine tune models on our own data. Got it. What What are the implications of that for the community at large? How does it compare to what, what was possible in the open source world before that? So open source always allowed you to fine tune models. Now chat GPT and GPT, chat GPT is also, we are able to fine tune chat GPT as well. Since the last couple of weeks, months where people have been developing models and pitting them against each other where it's like an open source versus closed source battle. Chat GPT and GPT-4 have very consistently come out on top. Okay. And one of the key drawbacks or one of the reasons why people would prefer open source was I have a lot of data that is specialized that is not available elsewhere but I have no way of using them uh, to train models that, that were built by OpenAI. With fine tuning you can now do that. And one of the other issues that, that we have seen in production is it is very hard to tell the chat GPT model to follow a particular set of instructions. Right. And as these instructions get more complex, yeah. the, the tendency to break those becomes even more apparent. With fine tuning, some of these things would be reduced massively. Got it. So in some ways then it looks like OpenAI's launch has overcome one of the biggest complaint or drawback that they had compared to the open source community. Is that fair? Yeah, so um, not only that, uh, so, so OpenAI already had the very best models in the industry and now with fine tuning you can take them a step further. That's great. Yeah. Um, and GPT 3.5 is a model that's like fast enough to use in production use cases. Um, and now with fine tuning on your own proprietary data, you can actually get performance exceeding that of GPT 4 at really fast speeds. Amazing. Um, and it looks like less than a week in, we have deployed it for our customers. Tell us about like your experiments in deploying fine-tuned GPT 3.5. Uh, what what were some of the surprises along the way? Sure. So uh, we we have been in this space for a long time. We have built like XGBoost classifiers to bird-based models to Llama 2-based models to even uh, OpenAI Chat GPT fine-tuned models. Uh, we were already using Chat GPT or parts of Chat GPT in in our, our production use case. And with fine-tuned models now, we are able to do extraction and reasoning on whether a call has payment and what kind of details those payments entail. Uh, going in when we found that your you, open source allows you to tune and play around with a lot of levers, a lot of uh, right, knobs. Right. Uh, OpenAI generally just allowed you one lever. So one of the one of the key apprehensions that we had were maybe you know the performance won't be good because there's not so much stuff to play around with. Uh -huh. But when we actually fed data and this was like curated, well thought out data and we just used the one lever that we had, we were actually able to extract performance for whether a call has payments, what kind of payments do they have, those kind of details and extract the maximum performance out of these models, even mm -hmm. outperforming some of our uh, currently fine tuned models. Got it. So you are building the, bringing in essentially the best of both the worlds, the flexibility that open source models provided previously as well as the inference that was very unique to GPT 3.5 and 4. Um, that's phenomenal. Were there any roadblocks or any hurdles in getting fine-tuned GPT out in, in less than a week? So, you know, we were really surprised at how seamless the process is. Okay. Now, of course, we do have a data set that is well curated for our tasks. Uh, but, you know, despite the lack of levers, we were actually able to train a really high quality model really quickly. Uh, and it performed really well right off the bat. Got it. So what are the implications for consumer finance at large of fine tuning GPT 3.5 and hope eventually GPT 3. Uh, GPT 4 itself? So uh, I think one of the biggest uh, takeaways here is going to be, uh, you know, uh, for now we were restricted to prompting. With fine tuning, we can actually uh, bring all of the billions of calls that we have, that every agency has to bear. We can, uh, we can learn from the best uh, in each, uh, from every agency, and we can bring that together to build really high quality models. Got it. So very unique proprietary data is now being married to very unique proprietary uh, technologies that OpenAI brought. Uh, yeah. 
exciting stuff. What, what do you think is next for the industry? I think uh, as an industry, the industry has been following a lot of yeah, these sorry. workflows, which, which seem ripe to be, you know, really, uh, really be supercharged by some of the general uh, generative AI stuff and LLM and, and LLMs. Uh, one, one small example is just sending out emails, right? Right. A lot of a lot of agencies want to kind of focus on digital strategy. Yep. They want to say that we want to have chat bots, we want to have customer support bots, we want to automate flows, we want to send personalized emails. But they are still stuck in a very archaic world where everything is template based, everything is very rule based. With with OpenAI, with generative AI, and the advent of LLMs. Yeah. Personalization at scale is something that will be possible and truly possible, not just not just segmenting, but personalization at even let's say a per account per person level, uh, which was previously not not heard of. That's amazing. Uh, excited to find out more and keep talking to you guys. Thanks so much.